Jotunheim. The coldest and one of the most dangerous biomes in the Ark world. Only the most hardcore or the most dumbest of survivors would attempt to inhabit this region and I will be one of them. Uncertain of which type of survivor I am, I will find out after 100 days of thriving and surviving in this frigid realm. And before day 100 hits, the goal is to have defeated all 7 boss guardians. To make this perilous journey more difficult, I only have one life to do it. As hardcore mode is enabled and adding even more difficulty, there are going to be rules and boundaries. On day one, I'm allowed to craft items, structures, and gather basic resources, and anything that can aid me in my survival journey. As soon as sunrise hits on day two, I head straight to Jotunheim. If at any point I die, this format will repeat itself. One day to craft, next morning to head to Jotunheim. I can only tame creatures in Jotunheim. I am by no means allowed to tame any creatures from the mainland or any of the other two realms. Once reaching Jotunheim, the only times I am able to travel back to the mainland is to to retrieve artifacts. Adding on to this, I can only open loot crates in those artifact caves to fight a boss or mini boss, and finally, to gather any resources that are impossible to obtain in Jotunheim. Cave flying is going to be enabled, just so Jotunheim will be far easier to navigate through. However, I cannot use cave flyers in artifact caves, and will have to run them on foot. And if you do find yourself enjoying the video and are interested in more art content, please do feel free to subscribe. It is great greatly appreciated. It is time to take a walk in a winter wonderland. Day 1 I spawned in as a human. As this is only my second time playing hardcore mode, I wanted to test it out. I wanted to give you all a nice spectacle of me dying in style, so I chose the volcano. As this may be the only time I'll be able to experience a boiling hot climate. The temperature was so hot it somehow broke my bones and I perished. But it felt good while it lasted. I then made a new survivor. I didn't go too fancy on the look, as I knew I'd probably be dying anyway. I get the first day to level up and craft as many items as I can that will help me survive the first day in Jotunheim, which will be day two. I spawned in and it was slightly chilly. I started by picking up some stones on the beach and punched a tree with my bare fists. I crafted myself a stone pickaxe and began farming resources so I could craft up the essentials. I had to kill all these poor little dodos for their hide and their raw meat. They gave me enough hide to craft bowlers and I managed to kill a parasol which gave me some more hide. And using Vin Diesel's hatchet I was able to craft up some wooden structures and upgrade my clothes to some hide armor. Nightfall was now upon me and my one day of grace had nearly ended. I had managed to craft most of the structures I needed. I just had to finish it off by crafting up a load of campfires and cooking up some meat for the rest of the night. Day 2 I started quick slotting all of my structures and grabbed as many campfires as I possibly could carry. It was time to face the freezing cold. I decided to teleport to the obelisk area as I figured that was quite a good area to start and I wouldn't be able to live too far from a teleport zone without dying. Jotunheim was a whole different beast. I rushed around frantically placing down my wooden structure as quickly as possible then followed up with placing all the campfires around in a big circle inside. I was getting pretty low on health. Once they were all lit I had enough warmth in the room to keep me from dying. I knew it was too good to be true. Me and my campfires are going to build a strong relationship over the next 98 days. I did realise in this location there's no war so that would definitely cause a problem for me. I began farming berries and gathering as much wood as I possibly could before having to run back to my structure. And I almost died because I cut it a little bit too fine. But this is all I could do at this point. I could only stay outside for about 30 seconds before freezing to death. So progress was very slow. There was a dire bear lurking around the front of my house which was a bit scary. I was hoping he wouldn't aggro on my building. By the end of day two I managed to craft a couple of structures, storage box, a bow and some mortar and pestles. Days three to seven was more of the same. I placed a bed down and I hear you asking why? Why place a bed down in hardcore mode? And the answer is I can use it to lay down on and have the ability to see 360 degrees around the outside of my building so I can see how close those dangerous threats are lurking. The days were long and the nights were even longer but I was slowly making progress in building some stone structures. Luckily there was some crystal here so I managed to make myself a spyglass which will come in handy. By the end of day 3 I had managed to craft and place down 
half a stone structure. A snowstorm hit. I had to retreat back to my campfires. On the way inside, I did spot a Dodicarus roaming around outside, which I would love to be able to tame. And by the end of day four, I had fully encased the stone foundations with stone walls. Decided to craft a load of arrows and placed some storage boxes down inside. This diabo was still lurking around the front of my house. At this point, I was running out of cooked meat. I was desperate. I had to take on this diabo. It was only a level 50, so that gave me some confidence. And arc being arc, I could attack him from inside and he can't actually hit me. However, he could hit my wooden structure inside, which is a bit disappointing. I was able to gather a nice amount of pelt, hide, and raw meat from this, which will keep me alive for a few more days. I then repaired the wooden structure inside and began making loads of trank arrows and narcotics. And later on, I was able to complete my stone ceiling, which gave me an extra layer of protection. I placed some forges down so that I could smelt that puny amount of metal that I had gathered. The night of day five and the morning of day six was a scary one. I had to place more campfires down as the temperature dropped below minus 70 degrees C, and I thought it was the end of me. I was beginning to lose hope, and I resorted to going prone and sticking my face in the campfires, which apparently worked, by the way. I know noticed that the temperature was finally rising again. Woof, it was a close call. When it was daytime, I crafted up a smithy and a preserving bin, and I went for a little jog down the road to see if I could find any creatures to tame, and there was absolutely no creatures, no sign of the Dodicarus that I spotted a few days ago. I had to instantly run back to my campfires to heat up. I also did manage to craft some fur boots and gauntlets from the pelt that I gathered from that dire bear. It felt like I was forever low on water. Living off berries was definitely not the high life, as I had to dedicate a lot of my time to gathering berries and pumping them inside me. Once again, my food was running dangerously low and I was struggling to find any creatures to kill. The only creature I could find is this Pherizinosaurus, so I baited him to base with an arrow to the face and I ran for my life. And of course, he couldn't attack me once again, but he was destroying my wooden structure. You would have thought I'd learned by now to change his wooden structure to stone, but I still left it as wood. But shortly after, I ended up killing it. It was only level 55. I got a little bit of keratin, some nice hide and meat, which will keep me going for a while. And repaired my wooden structure for the second time, still not making it stone. And with that small amount of keratin, I was able to craft a blood extraction syringe. This would greatly improve my survivability chances. Day eight, I found a mammoth strolling around down the road. I didn't even care what level it was. A mammoth would be extremely helpful. So I started baiting it towards my base. I had to retreat back to my campfires to heal up, which was very frustrating. I just just wanted to make friends with some creatures. I sat there for a few minutes and came back to trank out the mammoth, which I did successfully do. It was only a level 60, but any creature at this point is going to help me survive in this place. I gathered a load of berries and fed them to the mammoth. And on my way back to base, about to walk into my front door. Really, this is what I met with? I tried to place a spite wall down to deter it. It did not care, so I sat in the base for the rest of the night, quivering in my boots. Day 9 I placed down another bed so it would give me the ability to see 360 degrees around the outside of my building. The ferrocena was still there. I was so scared right now. I attempted to place some more spy walls down. I know how territorial these things are. And I got a little too close and angered it. It was time I had to show this thing who's boss and who owns this territory. And yep, she was messing up my building a treat. I did have a crossbow at this point, so I could deal a little bit more damage than the bow right now, but it was not looking good. She was a level 145, and what felt like a lifetime of shooting this Ferrazium in the face. My crossbow durability was running out. My building's durability was running out. I even had to repair my crossbow mid-fight. Finally ended up killing her, which did give me some nice level ups. At this point, I had lost a lot of campfires, so I had to go out and gather resources. I got that down desperate that I had to demolish a stone foundation from the outside wall so that I could craft more campfires. The cold broke my bones and I almost died. I then gathered more resources so I could repair the building. And my mammoth had finally tamed. I finally had a friend. The only downside is I needed metal ingots to make a saddle and I had zero metal. I spent every night crafting blood packs. I also named my mammoth Nelly. Day 10 I finally got round to crafting myself a metal hatchet. I felt like I was going up in the world. I was running dangerously low on food, water and metal and there was none of it here for me. I teleported to a new zone with Nelly in hopes to find some better opportunities. In this area there is a lake right next to the teleport zone. There's pearls in the water, metal and crystal rocks scattered throughout. There was also a level 55 diabet here. So I whistled Nelly to attack and she flattened him pretty easily. This rewarded me with some food 
and some other resources that I desperately needed. Mammoths have great base weight and I was able to mine a decent amount of metal from this location. And of course I was able to grab hide pelts and raw meat from this dire bear. We teleported back to base and I began smelting some metal. I was now able to craft a fur chest piece but needed more pelt for the rest of my fur gear. I was still short of hide to craft a mammoth saddle so me and Nelly had to return back to northeast where we were met by a megatherium and me and Nelly were a bit of a dream team we double teamed it and I was able to grab the rest of my resources and while I was there I grabbed some more metal. I finally made a mammoth saddle and Nelly was looking the part. I could now gather berries for days and didn't have to worry too much about the water issues. I cooked a load of meat and split a load of meat to spoil and crafting narcotics would be far far easier. Crafted myself some fur leggings. Day 11 I spent the day farming resources and crafting stone structures so that I could make an outpost in the northeast teleport zone. I made this one out of stone as I was smarter now than what I was when I started this mission. I also spotted a level 90x woolly rhino here which would be very tempting to tame. I spent the rest of the day adding a trap onto my structure and spent the night around my campfires injecting myself full of syringes to extract my own blood. Day 12 I attempted to bait this rhino into the trap. But mistakes were made. He didn't go into the trap. He ragdolled me straight into the lake. And I almost died again. Luckily I think Nelly was in the way so he couldn't pursue me as easily. I accidentally left her on neutral. She was able to distract him long enough for me to get into my building. So I could heal up next to my campfires. And luckily the rhino actually walked into my trap while all this was happening. And I could actually trank it out from inside the door. And I knocked out my second creature. Back at base I was beginning a smooth production line of medical brews. I teleported to a new area and with Nelly I was able to kill some creatures and get gather some much needed raw meat and hide. I fed the rhino and kept it sleeping with the narca berries. Day 13 I finally finished off my full set of fur gear. It also did not stop me from freezing at all. My woolly rhino had finally tamed up. I looked at what I needed to make a saddle. 100 cement in paste. Wow. That ain't happening anytime soon. And I knew that I had to make some melon paste the old fashioned way in this biome. I named my rhino Rianu Reeves. At the outpost I spotted a level 100 die bear. So I figured this would be a great creature to tame if I could tame it. Boiled a load of meat and made some flak armor in case I ever needed it. And crafted a load more water skins to improve my production of medical brews back at base. I would now do this daily every night while waiting around to explore in the daytimes. I crafted myself a long neck rifle and made some gunpowder, rifle ammo and trank darts. Day 14 I teleported back to the spot where I found that dire bear. Ran around for ages looking high and low but I could not find this dire bear to save my life. I was very disappointed so I filled my water up instead. I healed up a base and teleported somewhere else and I found this 150 X Argentavis. I had to tame this. I began making a trap for it. Returned to base to grab some med brews, placed my trap down and trapped it with ease because I'm an absolute beast. I tracked it out and returned back to base to spend time with my favourite group of friends, the campfires. Day 15 I gathered some prime meat from this mammoth to feed to the RG. I also found an Ankylosaurus right next to my trap so I figured I'd trank her out too. She was only a level 95 but it didn't matter to me. I will take every friend. There was also a Dodicarus in the area. It was a level 55 but it kind of walked into my trap with the RGs so I wasn't going to say no either. I had to teleport back to base to heal up. I named my Argentavis Air Force One. Day 16 I went on a rampage with Nelly as I realised there's a lot of salmon in the lake near one of the spawns. I was beginning to have dreams of fish on the menu tonight. My creatures had tamed up and I named the Dodicarus Daisy Me Rolling and I named the Anki Iron Maiden. And back at base I gave them both a spin and gathered some resources, of course. Spoiled a load of that fish meat for narcotics and crafted some more water skins so I can make a lot more medical brews. Finished off the day gathering some metal with Nelly. Day 17 I was up for adventures. I got 2 meters outside my front door and had to run back inside to take shelter from the snowstorm. I was not going to risk my life out in this so I decided to sit in front of my campfires and make some medical brews. I started gathering keratin so I could make an RG saddle. I also spotted that level 100 dire bear that I lost a few days ago. So I placed down a new trap next to my base and baited him into the trap. Started tranking out and ran out of tranks so I had to craft more at base. I returned and knocked him out and spent the night back at base as I normally do. Day 18 I fed Narx to the bear and killed this Ovis for some mutton. Fed it to the dire bear and I named him Teddy Bear. Oh he's so cute. 
I grabbed some healing items and killed as many creatures as I possibly could that would drop me carrot in. I was desperate to make an RG saddle. Also came across a Microraptor, and we all know how annoying those things are. So I just bowed it and decided to trank it out. I had some raw prime meat left. I must admit though, they do look pretty cool on my shoulder. Back at base, I named it Micro Machine. I was finally able to craft an Argentavis saddle. This was a pivotal point in my survival journey. Shame about the rest of my creatures, they probably will never get their saddles. I gathered stone on Daisy and wood on Nelly. And I spent the whole night crafting stone structures at my front door as I found a sweet spot where I could stand, access them both and craft stone structures at my leisure. It's finally time to move my base as I've had enough of this place. Day 19, I finished off crafting some more structures and some furniture so I could furnish my new base as soon as possible. It was time to teleport to Northeast. This new spot had so much more to offer. I turned all my campfires on just in case and began placing foundations, then the walls, and then the ceilings. By the end of the day, I had pretty much the whole structure down. I had a million campfires inside, so I wasn't gonna freeze anytime soon. And I finished the day by placing a gate down on my front door. Day 20, I finished off furnishing my new beautiful base and teleported back to the old base to grab a few more essential items including all my food narcotics all that good stuff then transferring it all into the new base finished off the day taking iron maiden and air force one out on their first metal run together the base was pretty much finished and it felt like I was burning alive, and that is how I wanted to live. Day 21, I found a 150 die bear, and even though I can't make saddles for them, I may as well try and tame it. I made some more med brews, grabbed my rifle, and crafted up some tranks. Placed down a new trap, and baited them in. I started tranking it out, and once again, didn't learn from my previous mistakes, ran out of tranks for the second time, had to teleport back to base, grab some more tranks, and return to finish tranking this beast out which I did successfully and I slaughtered another poor Hovis for all that mutton goodness. It was much easier making my healing items now that we live right next to the lake and this is how I spent most of my nights. Day 22 I found this level 150 mega ferret having a bath in this lake so I figured I'd try and trap it in my RG trap that I had there already. This didn't go to plan and got smart and kept ambushing me. After about four attempts of trapping her in I just gave up. My luck didn't get any better as I was out fighting this Ferrazino and my game crashed which I didn't think would happen in single player and on PC but uh, it did. This is my biggest fear when playing hardcore mode which is why I normally shy away from it. I restarted my game and luckily I was able to run back to Air Force One and escape. I finished off the Ferrazino and realised Micro Machine was just chilling in the air having a great time which is probably a good thing. I don't like my creatures to die. I teleported back to my RG trap and realised that the Mega Ferrum had walked in inside my trap so I sprinted in there and placed the door down and after what felt like three weeks I tranked it out picked up a poor Ovis and killed it for its mutton once again and fed it to the mega ferrum my 150 bear had tamed up and I named him Yogi day 23 the mega ferrum had tamed and I named it with its damage stat which was pretty decent I spotted a 145 Anctosaurus so I dropped it in my trap and then this rhino was part of the taming action too and it also happened to be a high level so I can't really say no to that, when he's asking to be tamed, I have to tame it, even if I can't make him a saddle. I ended up tranking both of them out in the trap, returned home to get some more tranks. There was also a level 150 mammoth in the vicinity. I was on a right taming spree, and I felt like a bit of a god. The table soon turned and I got triple teamed by a bunch of Microraptors, and Air Force One had to bail me out. I placed down another trap, as I found another high level RG. I was able to easily bail into the trap, and put the door down behind. It. Knocked it out and had to pump narcotics into my woolly rhino. Day 24, most of my creatures had tamed up. I named my new RG Argelina Jolie, my new Anki Flint Eastwood, of course, and my woolly rhino Road Rage. And shortly after, I spotted a 145 ferry, and I definitely felt the need to tame it. It ran straight through my trap like it wasn't even there, so I had to make some slight adjustments to an already terrible trap. And round two was my round. I was able to trap it and placed down the door frames behind it. And after a while, I knocked it out. My mouth had tamed up and I named her Big Mama. And found a 145 Dodicarus, so I gave the Ferrazino a new friend and dropped it into the trap. And I made them both roommates and pumped a load of narcs into the Ferrazino to keep it sleeping. Day 25, I took Big Mama on her first mission to gather berries. Looked into my cookie pot and realized the Fear Evolve 6 event had begun. I loved this event, I had to take part in it. I returned back to my creatures and fed them some major berries. Mmm, 
tasty. And had to pump some more Narcs into the ferris, you know. I was out exploring, looking for anything cool to tame and whatnot. I discovered a pleasant surprise. Mantis and Arthur Pleurs in a snow biome. I had no idea that they inhabited this biome. I was then hit by the reality that cemented paste might not be such a big issue after all. Haha! <laughs> On my travels, I would begin picking up Fear Evolved cosmetics. I could now craft a decent amount of cement and paste and prioritize making a Mega Ferrum saddle first before any of the other creatures, as I can use them in caves and I can gather fiber. And just before nightfall, I did find a level 25 wild wyvern egg in a nest, and although any kind of wyvern would help me, I had to be smart about this. I left it there and flew the opposite direction. Day 26, I crafted up a load of grappling hooks and loads of gear. I believe it's time to traverse the mainland and potentially retrieve an artifact of some kind. I was desperate for oil, so I flew to my favourite location with Argelina Jolie. It was time to run the bear caverns. I know this was a cave that was perfect for my Megatherium. I left Argelina Jolie at the front of the cave and dived straight in, killing every bug in sight. And this is a great cave, it gave me a lot of level ups on my survivor and on my Megatherium. I traversed the cave with grappling hooks, as of course I am not allowed to fly in it. While waiting around for the whole day, I did grab a couple of drops which, gave, which rewarded me with some nice weapon blueprints. And after that, I ended up retrieving the artifact of the strong, my first artifact. Returned to the front of the cave to retrieve Argelina, and then I said farewell to the mainland, returning back to Jotunheim, and my creatures had tamed up. I named one Terry the Ferry, and I named the Dodicarous John Doe. Crafted them up some saddles, and finally made a fabricator. Day 27, my metal was taking years to smelt. I really needed to make an industrial forge, so I went out to farm a load of metal with the boys. While doing so, I found a high level Ferrazino, so I made a trap ready to use later on. I had to travel up to the mountain, as I was desperate for a lot of metal, and this is probably the best spot in Jotunheim. I was also able to gather a lot of obsidian, and then took the time to appreciate the view from up here. There was a lake below with an island and standalone tree in the middle. It looked like a great base location. I would love to build there, but there would be no chance of me surviving out there. I teleported back to base to grab some weaponry, trapped and knocked that Ferrazino out. Afterwards, I was also able to grab a load of chitin and polymer from Mantis and all those creepy crawlies. Day 28, I was out for a roll and stroll with Daisy to gather some stone, so I could make the most amount of cement paste you've ever seen in your life. I had to return back to the ferry to feed it narcotics and measure berries. I decided to man up and pick up that level 25 wyvern egg I spotted the other day just so another one would respawn in. I spotted another high level RG and trapped it in my favourite RG trap to trank out. Fed it some mutton, crafted myself a pair of scuba flippers so that I could gather pearls in my lake. The crafting of electronics was finally underway. My Argentavis had tamed and I named her Marge. Now that I had a fabricator it was time to get some electricity up in here. Oof. You hear that sound? That's the sound of power. Illuminate. <laughs> my Verazino tamed up and I named it with its health stats. Day 29 I crafted up myself a new shiny long neck. Finished off making my med bruise and went out exploring. I found this beauty of a red megatherium. I baited it and trapped it into the trap. Tranked it out and there was also a Deodon in the area which was a high level. So I dropped it in the same trap. For some reason I didn't think it would attack the Megatherium but it was trying to attack my wards and it ended up hitting the Megatherium. But there was nothing I could do to prevent it. So I tranked it out. I grabbed a poor Hovis Granary from the shelf and Hovis Granary is their preferred food to eat. And as you can see 62% taming effect on us. Why Daydon? Why? Back at base I made myself feel better by decorating my house with Halloween cosmetics. And I must say it was looking rather spooky. Day 3 my crew had tamed up. I named the Megatherium Red and I named the Daydon Han Solo the second. Not because I've lost one already because he was in my last 100 days. I then had to travel to the mainland as I was desperate for oil once again. I returned to my favourite location and none of the oil rocks had respawned. We had to fly all the way to the other side of the ocean to the volcano. There is a lot of oil at the volcano. I pretty much farmed every rock in the vicinity with Flint Eastwood. I spent the rest of the day in the mainland searching for alpha predators to kill so I could gather some runestones. I didn't find anything at all. And that's quite depressing as when this map was released it was the alpha predator map of dreams. Day 31 I crafted up myself my first refrigerator and some ACs to keep me nice and warm. I found a high level Ferrazino outside my base, so I trapped it in a local trap. 
dragged it out and farmed all the metal around the edges of my base. Pumped a load of narcs into the Ferrazino. I spiked a high level mammoth and Ferrazino a little further away from my base. I figured I could use the same trap that I already just used to trap the other one. I just had to make some small upgrades. Baited it in with ease and finished off tranking it out before nightfall. Day 32 started by keeping the Ferrazinos asleep. I went back to the high level math and baited it all the way back to my base with some tactical manoeuvres. And sadly I messed the team up because I shot him after he got knocked out. And that really pissed me off. It had really good wild damage. I decided to let it wake up so I could re-knock it out another day. While out exploring I found a level 145 Microraptor which had some shades of red on its body. And it looked rather nice. So I decided to make it my friend and knock it out. There was a couple of high level snow owls roaming around and I would love to tame one. I attempted to trap it into my argy trap but the gaps in between the gates were too large and it escaped and started running rings around Argelina attacking her. So I figured I'd try and tame it here and now. I failed miserably, it flew off into the wilderness and I lost it. Today really wasn't going my way but at least the Mike Raptor tamed and I named him Mike. He will be a great addition to my team. One of my Ferrazine tamed up and it tamed up with a whopping 369 damage which could definitely work as a boss fight breeder and I pumped some narcotics into the other. Day 33 I went for a dangerous trek down into the frigid wyvern trench with my megatherium. I found some mantis so this gave me a nice amount of chitin and polymer which was ideal because it gave me the bug killer buff and I ran into a deadly foe that is a wyvern. It was only a low level and it died pretty quickly. I killed some more mantis and a wyvern egg had respawned in that nest. It was a level 90 this time which was quite a decent level for me. I would happily take that. My other Ferrazino tamed up with some average stats so I just called it Terry which I'm pretty sure I've called one Terry already but I'm sticking with it. And remember when I said I wanted to make a forge? Well I finally got around to doing it and I placed down the forge outside on some foundations. And naturally I gathered some metal on Flint Eastwood to test it out. I crafted up a shed ton of standing torches. I had a strange idea of placing them all around the edges of my rooftop. By the morning of day 34 my horror Halloween ritual was finally complete. I had a nice chuckle to myself because I thought it was quite funny that I spent all night doing that. But at least it looked pretty cool along with my Halloween decorations. The mouth I tried to knock out had woken up so I re-knocked it out and it instantly tamed so I named it with his stats. The damage was pretty low however which is a bit disappointing. I now needed to make an industrial cooker. I returned to the Wyvern Trench and dropped straight in, taking the maximum amount of full damage I possibly could. I did try to jump off by the way, I would never deliberately cause harm to my own creatures. There was no sign of intelligent life anywhere. I had to resort to killing poor little penguins, which I really hate to do so. I was out scouting for more mantis and I found a couple of fawny dragons on this mountain here. What is this, the new scorched earth? I didn't have a clue that they spawned in this biome. Either way, there was a load of mantis paired up with them, so I killed them all for their organic polymer. And back at base, I was able to craft an industrial cooker. And I'm not a qualified plumber by any means. However, I thought I did a pretty good job of it. I still had a load of organic polymer, so I grabbed a load of resources from base and traveled to the obelisk. I managed to craft up a load of cryopods and some cryo fridges, which would be able to change the way I played the game. Day 35, I could now make medical brews by the bucket load. It was also time to make myself an egg incubator. I gathered pearls from the lake, crafted up a load of electronics and cementing paste. I was out scouting for more Ferrazinos to tame and I got stunned off Air Force One by this pesky Microraptor right next to a Uteranus. Luckily he was attacking something and completely adored me which was great for me and shortly after I found a 145 ferry. I baited it all the way back to my base which was quite a long distance and I tranked it out. I spotted a red mammoth and it was a high level. Couldn't say no. Baited it home and knocked it out in my front garden. Day 36 I used Marge the Arch as live bait for this Daydon so I could bowler it and knock it out. It was a high level and I fed it some mutton. I was still searching for more mantis for organic polymer. I had found a load on this mountain and then a 150 UT right next to them. They started having a scrap so I got involved. I was torn between two worlds right now. I wanted the mantis for their organic polymer but I didn't want the UT to die because I wanted to tame it. The Uteranus ended up dropping straight into the wyvern pit along with some of the mantis but I was in hot pursuit. I snuck in front of the UT and managed to grab myself a mantis kill. Hid on top of this rock to de-aggro it. I teleported back to base to grab a trap. Returned to the Wyvern Trench, placed it down and baited the UT in. He fell in nice and snug and I made that same mistake again. I ran out of tranks so I had to teleport back to base. Grabbed some more healing items and some tranks. 
fed narcotics to the Ferrazino and returned back to the UT and was finally able to finish tranking it out. Fed it a sheep, there was also a high level snow owl in the area. So of course I attempted to tame it without a trap once again and surprise surprise I failed and it flew off and I lost it. Enough is enough, I had to make a trap for this snow owl. By day 37 my creatures had tamed up, I named my red mammoth Miss Dynamite and I named the Ferrazino. <laughs> Not good enough. The on Kevin Bacon, and the UT with its damage stat. So this is my new and improved trap for Snow Owl, and I was finally able to trap one. It feels to me I've had a montage of failed attempts to tame a Snow Owl, but this time I was able to knock it out, kill her Ovis, and feed it some mutton. She tamed up and I named her Snowy. I was minding my own business, crafting tranks while teleporting outside my base. And this giant monkey came out of nowhere, started smashing me up like he was the Hulk. Ultimately I panicked, I didn't know what to do. I placed my bets on him knocking me into my RG, which did happen and I managed to get back on her. It would be embarrassing if I died from crafting. Unfortunately I still had to kill some more penguins, but I was able to make an egg incubator by the end of the day. Day 38 I was searching for some friends and I found a high level group of direwolves. Figured they'd be great creatures to tame. I picked one up and knocked it out. Returned to grab another one and knocked that out. I did discover a cave. I decided to head on inside to investigate. I found a really cool statue inside of a mammoth and its minions. I picked up an Ovis, taming up my two direwolves, naming one with the health stat and I named the other Shadow. Day 39 I crafted up another fabricator and cooked some meat on the fire as I was getting a bit low. I found another high level Ferrazino to knock out but the stats were horrible so I ended up killing it. I also finally found a high level male Megatherium which I'd be able to breed with my female and you know what happens next? Picked up Hovis, killed it and fed it some mutton. Came across my first Dumbbeel and once again didn't know they spawned in this biome. I had to tame it. I picked him up and took him to a safer place. I felt this gust of wind on my back that was freezing cold and I realised I was getting pursued by a wild wyvern. I dropped the dumbbell in hopes to save him and I had to go toe to toe with this wyvern. Luckily it was only a level 20. Picked the dumb beetle back up and managed to tame it, naming it Goldilocks. My mega ferrum had also tamed, but I named him Mega Male. Had myself my first baby direwolf and I named him White Stripe. Day 40 begun with having a wash in my lake while gathering some pearls. Crafted up some electronics. I could now mate my mega ferriums together and knocked out another high level ferrazino. I begun crafting hard polymer from all that obsidian I gathered a couple of weeks ago and was able to make myself a chemistry bench. Returned to the Ferrazines to feed it that good stuff. I had a baby Megatherium and I named it O oh, Bugger. Day 41 I returned to the trap and found another high level Ferrazino and this one was the smartest I had come across in a very long time. It just didn't want to go into my trap. I thought my Argentavis had its aggro. Nope. This Ferrazino was relentless. It began tearing me a new one and almost killed me. I thought this was the end of my journey. One more hit and I was a dead man. After that I trapped it in a far safer manner and tranked it out next to its buddy which tamed up shortly after and I named it Meh. I built another trap to add to my collection and found two more high level fairies chilling next to each other so I trapped them by nightfall and returned back to base hatching that level 90 wyvern egg and I named him Ice Ice Baby. Day 42 I travelled back to the trap to knock out both of those Ferrazinos and pumped a load of narcotics into them before returning back to the mainland. My mission was to find alpha predators and potentially some bone variants so that I'd be able to craft some cool items from Fear Evolve. I came across a couple of alpha predators which gave me some nice rune stones. Had to return back to the Ferrazinos to feed them more narcotics then return back to the mainland and found myself a bone stego which took me all day and night to kill by the way. When nightfall hit I spotted an alpha meg in the water below. Day 43 I cared for my babies. The Ferrazino in my one trap had tamed up and I named him Meh. Returned to the other two to pump them full of narcotics and to feed them some food. I needed them asleep for a while. I had a mission to take on. Teleporting back to the mainland this time with Big Mama and my mission now was to kill that alpha megalodon. I had to fight a load of its brothers and cousins. I began fighting it but shortly after it, it swam further out to sea. I had to give up. There was no chance we were going to pursue this meg in the open water. We had to flee back to base. Later on returning back to the mainland and I came across 
a familiar sight. I believe this be Helm's Deep, and this is the area where that guy runs in there with his bombs and blows everyone to smithereens. Anyway, I spent the rest of the day killing alphas in the mainland. Back in my homeland, my two Ferrazinas had tamed up, and both of them were meh also. Day 44, I found another beauty of a red creature, and it was a 150 Ferrazino. I was almost at the point where I was giving up taming these, but I couldn't really say no to a red 150. It had quite a high health stat. This is just what I needed. Today was a good day to find Mandus. They were everywhere around the mountains and the Wyvern Trench. I had so much chitin and polymer, and I found this fawny dragon. It was the highest I had seen yet, so I'd like to tame it, and took it to a safer location to trank out. And fed some narcotics to the Ferrazino, killed an Ovis, and fed all the tasty mutton to the fawny dragon. I grabbed a load of resources from base and made my way back to the obelisk. I had so much polymer that I was able to make a lifetime supply of cryopods. My fawny dragon was tamed and I named him Will Smithy and used the rest of the polymer to craft up a load of vaults. Day 45 I returned back to the Ferrazino to feed it and keep it asleep and I found this absolutely beautiful RG and it would be rude not to make it my friend. Trapped another Ferrazino and I killed it because the stats were not that great. I carried on the trend and carried this Ovis to my RG trap, killed it and fed it some mutton. And I named it Volda Squawk. My red Ferrazino had finally tamed and it was 8,400 health. This was definitely going to be my health breeder. And back at base I instantly mated it with my second best damage stat as the high damage was the same sex. I also mated Marge and Volda Squawk. Day 46 I had my first Ferrazino baby and named it Julia Scissor. Had a baby direwolf that didn't take my stats, so I piked it. And the mother did not like that, but just charged in and proceeded to eat her baby. This was very peculiar behaviour. She then gave me another baby, and I named him Bolto. It's been a while, I also had to gather some metal on Flint Eastwood. Crafted some cementing paste so I could craft myself a rhino saddle. I only craft the saddle just for this moment. And I know I said I don't deliberately harm my own creatures, but this is Ark. Killing babies is okay. This baby never saw the light of day. It was time for some mainland action. I went to the volcano to find myself some cactus so I could grab cactus sap. Went to another location shortly after to gather myself some sand. Back at base I was able to craft clay which I needed to make a fawny dragon saddle. I began making greenhouse structures and with the help of Big Mama and Daisy me rolling I was able to craft up a load of large crop plots and managed to place down the foundation before eating a load of throwaway babies with Will Smithy. Day 47 I woke up to a Equus inside my base which appeared to be stuck so I thought to myself why not may as well try and tame it. The taming bar was barely going up with measure bears gave up and shot it in the back. Cared for my babies, placed all the crop plots down, finished off the rest of my greenhouse structures and whipped out my professional plumbing skills. The greenhouse was done and it was looking quite nice with an arctic backdrop I must say. I built some cages and threw Goldilocks where she belongs. Made some cactus broth with the rest of the cactus sap I had gathered. I would need this for a cave later on. Crafted up some grappling hooks. I decided I had enough time to retrieve an artifact from the mainland. Teleported to a nearby location and flew there on Marge. I reached the cave and I realised Mike, my Microraptor, was not on my shoulder and he's the one that had all of my grappling hooks and a lot of my gear and I realised I left him inside the house so I had to teleport back to base. I then cared for Bolto. Day 48 oh bugger had matured so I cryopodded him and I double checked that I had Mike this time so we made our way back to the hunter cave. Inside me and oh bugger dropped down into the water below where we were met with a cluster of piranhas but they were no match for us. I cryopodded him back up and was able to retrieve a blue drop which had a journeyman fur hat in which was ideal for me. I cleared the rock and made my way in finding another loot crate which gave me a journeyman shotgun. Oh bugger had no problem clearing out all the creepy crawlies in this cave. We dropped down into the water below, got attacked by a bunch of piranhas and sarkas but they were still no match for Oh bugger. He killed them all. I dived into the water below to find a red drop which also had some fur gear. It was a fur chest piece blueprint. Normally I hate these blueprints but right now this is the best kind of blueprint for me. I grappled up to the artifact location and surprise surprise it wasn't there. Don't you just love single player? So I had to wait around. I figured I'd get some shot practice in and started shooting the bats in the vicinity. It felt like three years had passed and my hair was going grey. And then finally, the artifact spawned in. The pain was over. And while I was here, I made my way back through the cave in hopes to find some more loot crates. 
the blue drop at the entrance had respawned and it gave me some fur gauntlets which was also quite a nice find. Day 49 I crafted myself a fluffy fur chest piece. Crafted up a load of ammo for my new shotgun. Had the baby ferrazina that finally took the stats so I had to wait around for a little while just to hand feed it past its infant stage before going out exploring and while out exploring I did find a 145 female ex Uteranus. This is just what I needed. I returned to base to craft up a trap. Flew back, placed it down and trapped it in. I made sure I had enough tranks this time and I knocked it out. Killed a poor Ovis and fed it some mutton. It is time to take on the Frozen Fortress Cave. I was looking at my diewalls. I would rename this to one high friend. She was coming with me. I cryopodded her and my Megapharium. I teleported to the mainland to a nearby location. Once reaching the cave, I poked my wyvern's head into the cave and started chomping all the gatekeepers. I planned on camping out here for the night, so I placed down a load of campfires, which would give me a good excuse to cook a load of meat, which I was always short on. But this snow biome was child's play for me. I actually felt like I was on a summer vacation. This is where I made camp for the night and prepared for battle tomorrow morning. Day 50, it was time to make our way into the cave. I sent my friend in to bait out the buried Pelovias, and I went in after. A brutal fight commenced. I tried desperately to help my friend, but she had no chance. She was a goner. I'm sorry, I tried. I did get some sweet revenge taking down her killers. I found a red drop in the water, and it gave me a Giga Saddle, which is about as much use as a chocolate teapot for me. I had now made it to the fortress area. This was always a death trap trap below. I was able to kill a few of the polar bears off with my long neck rifle before throwing out my megapharium, finishing off the rest. The next part is the dangerous jumps, but luckily we can use grappling hooks, so I was able to traverse these quite easily. I spotted a yellow drop on one of the platforms, checked to make sure the coast was clear, about to open it, out of nowhere a vicious polar bear dropped on my head and once again I panicked but realised I've got my grappling hook out, what am I doing? Luck was on my side, it was actually only a level 150, if it was a crazy high level I probably would have died. The polar bear ended up dropping down to the death pit, which was fine by me. I was now able to loot my crate safely, which contained a journeyman fur chest piece, which was actually better than my blueprint. The last part of the cave where the artifact is, is normally the most difficult, but in this instance it was probably the easiest as there was a lack of Pelovias and I was able to retrieve the artifact with ease. I made my way back through the cave and found a couple more loot crates. I returned to base to care for my babies. My Uteranus tamed and it had quite a decent amount of health. And of course I now had a high level male and female so I began mating them together to get me some fertilised eggs. I finished off the day placing down a gravestone for high friend. Day 51, the main focus for me was to pick up a lot of poo in the garden to feed Goldilocks and was able to finish off planting more crops. Paid my respects to my fallen comrade, hatched a couple more baby fairies which took the health and damage stats and these would be my breeders. I hatched some baby UTs, killed the one off and kept the other, naming it Call of Duty. Also popping out a couple of baby diewalls, naming one Dire Hard with a Vengeance and the other Akira. I decided it was time I built a perimeter so hostile creatures would stop roaming into my base. I gathered a load of stone on Daisy Me Rolling and already had the wood on Big Mama and began crafting Behemoth Gates. Day 52 I finished off crafting and placing the rest of the gates. Volto did a baby meat run. My direwolf pack were loving the new gates I had placed down to protect our one big happy happy family. I went out to find another Dumbiel to tame. I had no luck whatsoever, I did find a bunch of mantis to kill and level 20 wyvern egg which will be a great addition to the baby slaughterhouse. Came across a high level fawny dragon, took it back to my base to trank out, fed it a sheep, cared for my babies, crafted up a chem bench and some bolts to see the day out. Day 53, look at all those med brews in my fridge. All those nights stuck inside really paid off. It was time to head to the mainland to retrieve the two artifacts from the lava cave. On the way there I found a bone alpha raptor which dropped me some nice rune stones and some cheeky little bones. I had O bugger cryopodder with me of course. I made my way into the cave, baiting those cave dwelling creatures into the lava until this titanic boa wanted to say hello and then he just disappeared into thin air. I threw out my megatherium to deal with the fresh Later grabbing artifact of the clever and no surprises I had to wait around for ages for the other artifact and the loot crates to spawn in. After another three years I retrieved the artifact 
and grabbed a bunch of loot crates, but only really found a better long neck rifle that would benefit me. Found an Alpha Kano just before returning home, and I finally got a decent crossbow from this. When I returned to my base, it was snowing. I can't recall it snowing this much in a very long time. It was absolutely freezing, but whenever it snows it makes me feel all warm inside. It's safe to say we can all agree that that is the best feeling when struggling to survive. It also looked awesome combining it with my standing torch ritual. I cared for all my babies and finally was able to craft myself a fear of random chibi, which gave me a pteranodon and I named him Terry Cruz. Day 54 my fawny dragon had tamed and I named her Mrs. Smith. I knocked out a couple of mass as I was still searching for one with decent health and maybe some better damage. And later on, I realized Kevin Bacon was starving to death. So I had to do a massive meat run and feed him some bacon. Finish off the day, farming a load of stone on Daisy, which I was able to craft a load of cement in paste. Day 55, I was desperate for oil once again. I had to travel to the mainland, to my favorite area, and there was none there. I had no idea how it hadn't respawned. It had been weeks since I'd been here. There was also none at the volcano. What was going on with the game? While flying, I took my eyes off the screen for a second and face planted the water. And me and Flint Eastwood went for a dip. Luckily there was nothing dangerous in the area except for a megalodon that completely ignored us both. We were able to flee back to shore unscathed but this misfortune gave me a great idea. I had to take some drastic measures. A basilosaurus drops a lot of oil if we can kill one. I had the perfect creature to dive straight into the water with and that would be Flint Eastwood. I also did spot an alpha megalodon in the distance, so I had to fight them manta minions. There was hundreds of them it felt like, but Flint Eastwood was going strong. After dipping in and out of the water to regain stam, fighting armies of megalodons and mantas and you name it, and an alpha megalodon that dived out of the water to suffocate due to fear of being next, I was able to set my focus on the basilosaurus, which I felt bad for. They do not fight back, but I was desperate. We were able to grab a lot of oil from this. Back at base one of my mammoths tamed up with 8,000 health. I hatched a load more Ferrazina breeders and I named one Scary Terry the Return. Spent the rest of the day caring for them and finally crafted an industrial grill. Can't believe it's taken me this long. Day 56. After the events and success of day 55, I knew what I had to do. I had to find and tame a high level female Ankylosaurus so she can make babies with Flint Eastwood. I searched high and low for an Ankylosaurus. I couldn't find any but low levels. I then settled for knocking out this beauty of a red mammoth, but it had really bad stats and I had to kill it. And proceeded to knock out not one, not two, but three more high level mammoths and sadly I had to kill another one off. While still searching for my desired female Anki, I was beginning to lose hope that I would never find one. I decided to fly up to the tippity top of the mountain and there she was, a level 145. I picked her up and took her back to base, cared for my babies and knocked her out in my favorite trap. Day 57 I stocked up on berries for the babies and then killed a load of poor babies. Now that I had enough female breeders I decided to start mating them with my better damage stat, male. I spotted another high level Ankylosaurus which was a male and fed berries to my mammoth. Flew back with the male Ankylosaurus and dropped it in my trap where my other one had tamed so I named it with its damage stat and then knocked out the other Anki. Cared for my babies and grabbed a load of fertilized eggs from my fairies and my new Ankies. Day 58, I recovered my mammoths that were now tamed and the one tamed up with 351 damage. I was pretty certain I had the creatures I needed to complete all the bosses. All I needed to do was breed an actual army. Returned to base, I made the high health with the high damage. There was a really nice woolly rhino outside my base. I couldn't say no to this. I baited it into my trap and it ran straight over it. It ended up aggroing on my trap, so I just tranked it out from here and ran around the garden to knock it out. The Ankylosaurus had tamed with a whopping 6,600 health, which is probably the highest I've ever seen on an Anki that I've tamed. And my mammoths had their first baby, and I shot it in the face. Day 59, I was feeling fine, as I was taking a trip to the mainland with some of my crew. I needed to make a gas mask for a certain cave, and black pearls are needed for it. And most methods are extremely dangerous. However, trilobites have a small chance of dropping black pearls, and I only needed a small amount. They were extremely difficult to find, I did end up 
up going through this shallow trench and I found a load in there. A couple of frets but they were no match for my Ferrazino. I was able to gather enough pearls just from this trench alone. I gathered as much sap as possible as I most likely need this for sweet veggie cakes and killed another Alpha Raptor which did upgrade my crossbow for me. Back at base I crafted myself a cheeky little t-shirt but it looked like I was just wearing pyjamas. I went to feed my rhino and it wasn't there. I had no idea what had happened. You. It had to be you. Finally had my first baby mouth and I named her Ellen Tusk and was able to craft some absorbent substrate from the black pearls I had gathered. Day 60 to 71 was spent popping out a load of babies. I hatched around 20 Ferrazinos and around 12 Ankylosaurus. My front garden was rammed full of creatures. I also had a purple baby mammoth and I named him Donald Trunk and a baby Uteranus named Lieutenant Dan. As I was caring for a lot of babies, I had a lot of downtime around the base, which I would spend gathering metal, crafting bullets, saddles for my army, fertilizing my crops, and even had time to craft a pumpkin helmet, which I donned my Uteranus. I was also able to kill a few more alpha predators. Day 72 to 78, I actually found a ghost direwolf skin, and I equipped it on Akira. My army had fully matured, and they were looking mean. Call of Duty spent most of his free time boosting the morale of the troops and I played my part by giving them all a motivational speech. It was time to name them with some scary names. Ann Kylo Ren, Ann Kylie Minogue, Ann Kyle Reese, Hank the Tanklo, Fred Flintstone, Tom Hanks and Tanklosaurus. And now the Ferrazinos, Tickles, Cuddles, Freddy, who wants a haircut? Charlie's Ferrazino, Edward Scissorhands, Parsnips, Cut and Shave, Quentin Ferrazino, Will Smith, The Butcher, Angry Vegetarian, there is no nail clipper for these, Free Hugs right here, Guy Fawkes, Tickly Menage, a claw! And these days were all spent leveling up my creatures in a variety of ways. I would take trips down to the Wyvern Trench to kill off the Wyverns as they drop a lot of XP. And of course, every art player's favourite pastime, unclaiming babies and killing them off. This was my main source of income for XP. And just to make sure nothing went to waste, I would cook them all up on my new industrial grill to fill my belly. I crafted up another egg incubator and stuck it outside, which would speed up my leveling process immensely. Day 79 was the day I dreaded most in this hardcore playthrough. Snowy healed up the army and we set out to begin our march to Steinbjorn's cave and there was a lot of us. This army was bred for one purpose. Getting them all inside the cave was pretty difficult but we made our way in and I organized them into formation so that Steinbjorn would be the meat in our sandwich. Call of Duty had his pumpkin hat on and got the troops fully motivated. I puffed my chest out to hide how scared I really was. It had been about a minute and Steinborn had barely taken any damage. I dismounted Call of Duty and stuck the auto courage on. And I wouldn't say I panic grappled, but I grappled up to the roof in hopes to deal extra damage to help the troops out a little. And to make matters worse, Call of Duty decides to full send it. I must have forgot to turn the option on to ignore group whistles. He got stuck in. I could tell my army was getting bloody. I got desperate and jumped on a ferret, you know. I was hoping to get the boss stuck so he wouldn't be able to attack. Call of Duty was the first to fall. Steinborn was getting low on health, but I noticed that we were starting to drop thick and fast. I grappled back up to the cave roof in hopes to deal some more damage. But it was hopeless. My team was dying. And for the first time in seven years of playing this game, I had to retreat and leave my army to die. I had let them down and I failed as a leader. Day 80, I was feeling broken. Minus my breeders, I only had four fairies left. I placed a gravestone down for every fallen member of the army. I had a baby UT naming him the third backup and a baby mammoth named Woolworths. I had to rebuild the army. I hatched around 20 Ferrazinos. I also popped out a load of Anki babies. I had to go full speed ahead. Day 81, I had to become a much better multitasker and decided to teleport to the mainland to retrieve an artifact. I swam all the way there on Tom Hanks while being pursued by a bunch of Megalodons, but luckily made it to the cave okay. Then slapped a few bats, threw out Obugger and steamrolled every insect in the cave. I waited around forever 
as there were no jobs spawning in, and made my way down to the long, dark depths, where I met a few sneaky enemies. I was able to outsmart most of them, until this scorpion broke all of my armour while grappling up to the roof. But he ran off and I was able to grab the artifact. I'd be scared of me too. On the way back out of the cave I found a red drop with the best loot you've ever seen. Mastercraft cloth boots. Back at base cared for the babies and had a baby mouth named Wool Smith. Day 82 I hatched a load more Ferrazina babies. And Wool Smith died because I forgot to feed him. I knew that I needed some extra firepower to take on Steinborn. And I knew exactly what I need. I unlocked bug repellent and went to make a broth of enlightenment. But I needed right no horns. While out killing rhinos, I found the missing piece of my puzzle. A 135 Arthur Pleura. So I picked it up and took it back to base and dropped it in my lake, rushing round to make a broth of enlightenment. And I was able to instantame it. I killed off some more rhinos and found another high level Arthur Pleura. Rinsed and repeated the same process and also instantly tamed this one. And already I had a breeding pair. I had a lot of babies to care for right now. Day 83. Remember that cactus broth I made? This is where I am going to use it to its full potential. I said goodbye to Mike and teleported to the mainland. And luckily did not get attacked, which is always my biggest fear while teleporting. I took the broth and donned my scuba gear, diving straight into the water. And my heart was pounding. I hate water. And this cave is fully underwater, full of dangerous nasties. And this is where the cactus broth comes up trumps. It basically camouflages you from wild creatures. So I was able to swim all the way through the cave to the artifact, which was there by the way. I was expecting my worst nightmare to happen and it not actually be there, but it was. This isn't exactly a situation that I could wait around for three years. So I was pretty relieved. I could quickly grab it and even teleport back to base underwater. My Ankies have matured, so I went on a killing spree and popped out some Arthur Pleura babies. Day 84, I crafted up myself a gas mask. It was time to run another artifact cave. I went streaking down the beach and caught a cheeky lift in the form of a mega chillong. <laughs> it was actually really fun by the way. And I made it to the entrance of the cave and oh bugger steamrolled everything. And once I reached the artifact, it wasn't there. Waited around for half an hour and it still wasn't there. I had to return to base to care for my babies. Day 85, I returned back to the swamp cave and after waiting around once again, I finally retrieved the artifact of the brutes. Spent the day scouting around for more Arthur Purrs to tame, but could only find a level 8 which I tamed on spoiled meat, which did take a lot longer, but Eddie Arthur Pleura is going to help me out. I also had a baby female mouth named Ellie. Day 86, I teleported to the mainland to gather a load of sap and to slot cap my wyvern and myself with honey. And back at base, made as many sweet veggie cakes as I possibly could. I'm going to need them. And I had made a lot. Some of my Ferrazinas had matured by now, so I began leveling them up too. Day 87, me and my farming team flew up up to the mountain to gather some resources. I needed to gather a load of obsidian to be able to make Arthur Pleura saddles. And while I was here, it'd be rude not to gather some metal too. And right next to us was a level 150 Dodicarus. And I asked myself, I wonder if they'd be useful to use against Steinbjorn. So I took the Anki home and right outside my base, I spotted a 145 also. I think it's telling me something. I was able to craft up a bunch of Arthur Pleura saddles. They had also matured, so I went for a sliver and slaughtered some babies. I flew back to the mountain and picked up that dodicarus and was able to knock them both out in my trap. Day 88 begins just like any other day by slaughtering a bunch of babies for levels. Fed a bunch of narcotics to the Dodicarus brothers and headed to the mainland to take on my worst nightmare of a cave. I landed on a lone rock in the ocean. This is roughly where I thought the cave was didn't exactly know where the cave entrance was. I kind of guessed it was underneath these rocks that I found in the ocean and that is where I placed my bets. I was correct. I almost suffocated as I forgot my scuba tank but what else is new? If you watched the last 100 days I put out you'll know the struggle I had with this cave. I was luckily able to grapple up to the entrance perfectly fine, throw out my megatherium to slaughter everything in the cave. And just to dampen my spirits, I ran through the whole puzzle maze and the artifact didn't spawn in. So I decided to come back out and wait around with my megatherium to spend the whole night there. I refused to come back to this cave. Day 89, I cryopodded Obugger, heading down to the long, dark, puzzle-filled, booby-trapped tunnels with death-defying jumps. On a more positive note, I could hear the artifact facts aura which made doing this for the second time a lot more satisfying and i was able to grab the artifact 
and teleport out. Back at base I cared for Wolfsmith 2 which I did fail to introduce by the way. The Dodex had tamed, I named the one Stony Stark and the other Dwayne Johnson and began naming my Arthur Pleuras. Steinbjorn's worst enemy, Dora the Arthur Pleura. Super Noodle, Steinbjorn Breaker, Steinbjorn Finisher, and Steinbjorn Destroyer. Teleported back to the mainland to recover the final artifact, which is the Mount Doom Cave. Headed inside with O Bugger, eyeing up those Desmodus hanging from the ceiling. But I knew they wouldn't aggro on me while riding the Megatherium. Mwahahaha! Of course, I had to wait around for three years and finally grabbed the artifact. Back in Yotanheim, I managed to save this 140 Dodicarus from this Uteranus and began to knock it out back at base. Day 90, I finished knocking out the Dodicarus. And after constantly leveling Ferrazinos up, I had to heal them all up on Snowy. Cryopod them all up and then teleported to the mainland with her and we made our way to Baylor's cave. I threw all my Ferrazinos out. They wouldn't sleep that long because Ferrazinos have a super fast torpor drain. Once they awoke, I positioned them all in a big circle around Baylor's terminal. I was ready to lead them to victory. Baylor, on the other hand, was not ready. We absolutely mopped the floor with her. We were also super healthy, so I teleported them straight to Asgard and parked them at the next mini boss terminal. Day 91, my new Dodecarus tamed up and I named her Roxanne. I was now able to mate them together so we can have some babies. Cryopodded my Yankees and threw them all out at the Asgard terminal. I had my first baby Dodecarus and I named him the Rolling Stones. Teleported back to Asgard with my direwolf pack. It was time to fight Haiti and Skull. We flattened Skull like a pancake and shortly after Haiti met the same fate. As my direwolf pack survived I checked the health on the ferries and they had barely taken a scratch. Day 92 I cried the Arthros and my Yankees and went on a stampede with Wolf Smith. Headed back to Steinbjorn's cave and threw out all my Anclos and Arthur Pleuras. And while I was here, I went for a cheeky peek in the main cave. Expecting to see the boss still there, I found a nice surprise. One of my Ferrazinos and Anclosaurus had survived. Cut and shave and Fred Flintstone. I could not believe my eyes, but oh boy it's good to see you guys. And they were salivating for revenge. Teleported back to Asgard to teleport my army to the mainland. The march began once again to the Broodmother cave. I positioned them at the ready, returned to base to grab the artifacts and trophies. Healed up Wallsmith to full and made my way back to the cave. Nightfall was upon us but I didn't care. I had no time to lose. And I think you can guess what happens next. We popped her tires and flattened her and were rewarded with our first tech grams which I'm never going to get the chance to make. Day 93. After the Broodmother victory I also found a victory drop in her cave which gave me a fur leggings blueprint. I teleported the army back to Jotunheim and made myself some of those journeyman fur leggings. Equipped them and I was still freezing cold. I placed down the broodmother flag on my roof. I saw an icon on screen that I wasn't familiar with seeing while being outside. I finally wasn't freezing to death and it only took me 93 days to achieve this. I spent the rest of the day doing about 5 meat runs to feed up Ham Solo and Kevin Bacon. Cared for the baby Dodicarus and teleported to the mainland. I needed to find a couple more alpha predators. After we failed the Steinborn boss didn't have enough rune stones. I was luckily able to find a couple and managed to get enough rune stones for the boss and spent the rest of the evening moving my smaller creatures into the cave. Day 94 was the day that I grabbed a load of sweet veggie cakes and killed some babies on the rolling stones. Jokes aside, it's Steinborn time. I teleported there with my wolf pack so I wanted them to go down fighting. Regrouped with the army and once again we began our march into battle across the tough terrain dropping down into Steinborn's cave where I got a little too confident diving in myself I dived straight onto Lieutenant Dan's back and nearly died now that would be embarrassing I healed up the rolling stones and managed to get everyone in cave and in position there was a lot of us we were not messing around we were salivating for revenge I sent them into battle once again he was not taking much damage and I grappled to the roof for the extra damage output but it did seem like he was taking a lot more damage than my previous attempt. As the fight dwindled on for a lot longer I did notice that Steinbjorn appeared to be stuck in cyber creatures and unable to attack. He wasn't able to withstand the most unorthodox army Ark had ever seen. 
Yippee-ki-yay, Revenge never felt so good. The morning of day 95 was spent celebrating, but the celebrations were short-lived. We still had a mission to complete. I rounded up the army I needed to continue our war march through the mainland, heading to the Megapithecus Cave and Terminal. The giant gorilla is next on our list. I teleported back to base, seeing Ham Solo completely out of food. I spent the rest of the day doing meat runs and paid my respects to my fallen comrades. I'm sure they'd be proud of what we achieved. It was an emotional day. I sat down next to my fire with Mike and we reminisced about all the good times we had together with them. I woke up saying farewell to Mike as he will not be able to join me on this endeavour. Making my way back to the Megapithecus terminal with Han Solo and sharing out the sweet veggie cakes. It was time for a winter holiday. Let's get in there. The Megapithecus was was not happy to see us. I baited him in with the date on. One does not simply throw a gigantic rock at Wall Smith without consequences. And we teleported out, this time to another mainland location, which is right near the Dragon Boss Terminal. And we made our shortest march yet. And I teleported back to Jotunheim, placing down the second Boss Guardian flag. And finished off the day the way it started, sitting down next to Mike. He is a great pet. Day 97 I crafted up some shock and ammo, fed Kevin Bacon all of those babies that I cooked up and also given him sweet veggie cakes to carry. As always I had my mammoths and my ferrazino separated into two taming groups so I could command them a lot easier and this is going to be extremely important in this dragon boss fight. I teleported back to the terminal with Julia Scissor and Kevin Bacon. I shared out the sweet veggie cakes and I made sure my Daedon and UT were on the right aggression settings. The last thing I want is for them to full send it into the dragon's mouth. It was time for the scariest boss fight in the game. The dragon is a right powerhouse and we need tactics to defeat him. I wanted to make sure the Mammoth took the brunt of his attacks. I split up my mammoths from the group as the dragon really loves a chunky snack. And he took the bait. Tactics worked a treat. I checked on my mammoths back at the terminal and they were very low on health. Will the Smith and Woolworths were the ultimate fighting champions. Back in Jotunheim, it was time for our final march and this time we were heading to the Blue Obelisk. This is like deja vu all over again. I came across a familiar site, my first base and where my journey began. That place had been abandoned for over 70 days now. I got my creatures into formation and placed down the dragon flag back at base. Day 98, I went out searching for a rhino to tame as I did have a good saddle for one and I potentially wanted something cooler to ride for the final boss fight. I looked high and low to find a high level and when I finally did it was right outside my base and I was able to trap and trank it out. I can't remember the last time my base was so empty. I'd even admit that I felt a bit lonely. I waited around all day for that rhino to tame up and on day 99 it did. I named him the one hit wonder. There was no time to make babies so I popped out a load of different species of babies and flattened them with the one hit wonder. I wasn't really sure how to spend my time so I began making some dye. I decided I would paint my armour with my channel colours. It looked terrible. I looked like I was dressed as Spongebob Squarepants. I had to change it. Ah, much better. Day 100 was finally here and my standard torches had finally gone out. This was unacceptable. I spent the morning refilling them with Big Mama's help. It is now December after all. I had to make sure it was lit up like a Christmas tree, ready for Christmas. I see you Terry Crews getting up in my cinematic shot. I sprinted to the obelisk on one hit wonder and Lieutenant Dan was doing what he does best, motivating the troops. He's a good egg. It is time to meet our destiny.
Yeah, the Rhino failed miserably, by the way. Back at base I placed a final flag and that was that. We marched our way through the whole map and flattened every boss in sight. And I think we had the right to be proud. There was only one thing left to do and Lieutenant Dan had already rounded up the troops in position to give our fallen friends the burial ceremony they deserve. Their sacrifice is what made us what we are today and I will never forget that. May they all rest in peace. And this is where my journey comes to an end. Thank you all for watching. I hope you've all enjoyed watching this as much as I've enjoyed making it. And if you found yourself enjoying the video and having a good laugh, please do feel free to like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps me out and I really appreciate it. And I hope to catch you all in the next video.